Note, this episode assumes you've seen the episodes on the existence of God and the truth of Catholicism. Please check the directory in the video description if you haven't watched those yet. Hey, 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 welcome, welcome back, back to Clean Cut, where we can talk, we can talk about, about the truth about, about just about, about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. Last time we discussed the few Bible verses that the Church has official interpretations of, and now let's do some interpretation. Do we need to decrease so that God can increase? In short, do we need to get out of God's way? This is an interesting topic, since there are Bible verses that seem to point in a couple of different directions at first, and because this is an episode about biblical interpretation, we'll be mainly looking at the Bible verses related to this topic and see what conclusion we can draw from them. First is the verse where we get this idea from. He must increase, but I must decrease. John 3.30 these words are spoken by John the Baptist in response to his followers who were worried that Jesus was baptizing others and people were following him instead of John. John's response is meant to inform them that people should follow and be baptized by Jesus since he is the real Messiah. On the surface, therefore, it seems like these words are meant to be a specific observation on John's position, that his role needs to diminish so that people will follow Jesus instead, rather than a general moral command for everyone to step aside and let God handle everything. However, this isn't the only verse in the Bible that says something along these lines. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel not in wisdom of speech, lest the cross of Christ should be made void. 1 Corinthians 1, 17 And I live, now not I, but Christ liveth in me. And that I live now in the flesh, I live in the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and delivered himself for me. Galatians 2, 20 And he said to all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. Luke 9.23 With all this talk of our wisdom making God's work void, of us not living if God is in us, and of denying ourselves to pursue God, it's easy to see how the notion might arise that we serve only as an obstruction to God, and that God therefore needs to get rid of us, or at the very least our free will, in order to do his work most efficiently. This, in turn, would lead to a very anti-human understanding of God, and this whole line of reasoning once led even a great Christian thinker like C.S. Lewis to claim that heaven must be a continual, complete self-sacrifice. However, drawing this conclusion ignores many other things that Jesus said, such as, His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant, because thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will place thee over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Matthew twenty five twenty three. But he said to him, Son, thou art always with me, and all I have is thine. Luke fifteen thirty one said in reference to the faithful son who did the will of his father. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking good pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went his way and sold all that he had. And bought it. Matthew thirteen forty five to forty six. In these verses, we see Jesus spelling out for us that the kingdom of heaven comes with many rewards, specifically joy, great riches, and everything that belongs to God. Furthermore, all three verses refer directly to the individual, distinct person who is receiving the rewards: good and faithful servant, son, and merchant. The third is especially interesting, since it refers to heaven in economic terms, as something which can be bought for a large price, though not necessarily in terms of money. The verse doesn't specifically say that the merchant bought the pearl with money. These are only a few of the examples of verses in which Jesus describes the kingdom of heaven as a possession, or as riches, usually in the form of an inheritance or a price given for work, even when, as in the parable of the vineyard owner in Matthew 20, the value of the reward may be independent of the amount of work done, or may not seem to be deserved. 
However, it could hardly be considered a reward of any kind to rob people of themselves continuously, or force them to continually give and give, and never have any chance to receive in exchange. Therefore, the idea that we need to get out of God's way doesn't seem to be compatible with the overall teachings of the Bible. It would make more sense to just say that some of these verses should be interpreted differently, like so. In 1 Corinthians 1.17, St. Paul may be saying that the cross of Christ can win the hearts and faith of more people than human wisdom, and in fact, that mere knowledge or wisdom might actually turn some people away. This could easily be true without implying that God needs to get us out of the way. Some people can help bring others to the faith without using human wisdom at all. Galatians 2.20 seems to be saying that St. Paul isn't really alive since God is in him, but he could just as easily be saying that he now needs to also take account of the fact that God is living in him when making statements about his life. In fact, since Jesus says in Mark 12.27 that God is not of the dead, but of the living, it's hard to picture this verse meaning that God could deprive someone of life by being in them. The verses about denying ourselves or putting to death things of the flesh aren't about giving up our identities or our individuality or our bodies as such, but refer to the difficult process of giving up the things we want in the short term in order to pursue the longer term rewards of heaven and eternal salvation. St. Paul says as much in Romans 8.18. But what about us? Is there a verse that specifically says that human beings can enhance the work of God? Does the Bible say that we can help God instead of having to get out of his way? And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord. Luke 1, 46. Well, that was fun. I hope to get back to discussing things like the historical heresy soon, but for next time, I'm going to be addressing some issues brought up in the comments sections of some of my videos, starting with the question, Is reality bigger than the scope of science? That's, That's all for now, all for now so, so keep, keep asking, asking questions, questions, and thanks, thanks for watching. For watching.